Hello and welcome to Marcella's Pairs. Today's project is a beginner's project and it is a request by, made by a friend and um, it's about making a pouch using a plain fabric or a fabric that doesn't have a design that at some point might look upside down. So if I take this pouch for instance, you will see that the fabric has to be always in this position and if I turn it upside down, the design will be obviously upside down. So when I talk about a plain fabric or a simple design, I'm referring to just a simple design that doesn't matter in which position to place the fabric, it will always look all right. So if I were going to make a pouch using this piece of fabric, just by folding it, it will be fine on both sides. However, if I were going to use this fabric, if I were to fold it in half, we will have this side looking right, but the other one will be wrong. So to use this, to make this pouch, I used a plain denim, as you can see, and I just folded it, and there are no seams here at the bottom because I didn't have to join two pieces. Like in this one, this pouch has a seam here to join a piece for this side and another piece for the other. Of course, this pouch has a lining inside, which is also a fabric that doesn't have an upside down position. So quite simple to use and I also folded it. You will see later on. Now, um, I will be giving you the dimensions, of course, in the description box below the video. Uh, the dimensions were specifically for this pouch as requested by my friend, but you can make obviously any size of pouch. You have to think of what size pouch you want at the end, the finished product. If you want to make a pouch of different dimensions, just think of the finished product, what you want to achieve. So let's say, for instance, that you want this pouch to be 8 by 4 inches. You will have to have a piece of fabric which is 8 inches wide and 8 inches long, so that when you fold it, you will have 4 inches here but you will have to consider add to those dimensions your seam allowance. I normally work with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So for an eight inches wide, you will have to cut eight and a half inches because a quarter here and a quarter here. Now to have a four inches here, you will have to make it go eight inches folded will make four, but then you will have a seam to attach the zipper here, so an extra quarter of an inch on each side, that will make another half inch. I hope you're understanding what I mean. So the desired width plus the desired length and add the seam allowance. Now, as you can see, I, I made here a boxy bottom, which is optional. It is a one inch with bottom, which means that I have to add to the piece of fabric, I have to add an extra inch to be able to achieve that flat bottom, but still my pouch be of the four inches that you might want. I hope this is clear. So make a little sketch, think what size you want your pouch to be, and add seam allowance plus extra for the bottom if you want to make a bottom. Okay, I hope you can understand what, what, I, what I meant and keep watching. Everything will be detailed as well. The, the, the dimensions and materials that I used will be detailed in the description box below. If you cannot see the descriptions, please click on, there's a little arrow here on this side at the bottom of the video, a little V-shape, click on it and the whole detail will appear for you. Let's start talking about the materials. 
I have here a piece of fabric for the outside and one of the same dimensions for the lining and it measures eight inches by eight and a half both of them they're the same size and I have uh, a piece of ribbon which is the one that will be decorating on the top on one side by by the side of the zipper so we have a zipper which is longer than eight inches and a piece of ribbon that I also cut a bit longer than the eight inches because as you see it frays and it will be easier for me to attach it and then trim it off. As you can see, I am using a denim, a navy denim, and on the wrong side, I applied fusible interfacing. And for this one, I used a fusible fleece just to make it a little bit puffy. Now, the reason I cut it of this size is because my friend sent me the dimension she wanted and she wanted to be seven and a half inches wide by three inches down so to achieve the seven and a half i had to consider that i needed seam allowance and i normally work with a quarter of an inch seam allowance so seven and a half wide plus a quarter of an inch on each side makes eight inches and to make it three and a half inches down for the like this I had to cut eight and a half inches down I am making this pouch so that it has a, a bottom box it's not just flat like, like this it has a little boxy bottom and that will be one inch so to achieve that to achieve a final purse that will be three and a half inches down, three and a half here, here three and a half there, makes seven inches. Plus the seam allowance here and here where the zipper will go. So seven inches plus two seam allowances makes seven and a half inches. Plus the the bottom shape which will be one inch that makes an eight and a half inches okay i will take now the zipper as i said before it is longer than the width of my fabric because uh, we will be trimming it off later and then we won't have these ends exposed when we finish the pouch I shall take the zipper and put the teeth facing down on top of the right side of the fabric and I will also take the lining with the right side facing the right side of the main fabric so the zipper is um, sandwiched between the two fabrics I shall pin securely making sure that the edges all the edges match neatly so putting I like to put the zippers across like that all the way down and I will use the zipper foot in the sewing machine and I will stitch along here all the way to this end so this is what we have so if I lift this like so we're having the zipper there and if you imagine that when the pouch is finished if you open the zipper you will have the lining fabric there I am going to close it again I'm just going to hold the two fabrics together and put a couple of pins so they don't move And what I like to do, and I always recommend to do, is to top stitch along here, close to the edge, because that will catch the main fabric and the lining fabric, 
and this fabric will keep in place. So when you open the zipper, it will not uh, ac accidentally catch the lining fabric if it is loose. Also, it gives it a very nice finish. I think it looks neater. Now, in this case, since I have this ribbon, I will put the ribbon on top and I shall pin it neatly, making sure that it is in the position I want it. Oh, I also recommend that at this stage you iron the fabric so it's, it's a bit flatter and easier to work with. I will first top stitch along here and it, I will come back to you. So I have stitched it along. This is still loose here, but that secures the top of the lining there. So I am going to move the lining out of the way and then I will stitch along here because I don't want to have two lines of stitches at the back showing through the lining. So if I move it out and then stitch there, I will have my ribbon attached to this piece of fabric. And the ribbon is completely optional, but a nice detail to add. It is now stitched along and if I lift this, you can see that this second stitching is hidden, it's not showing through the lining. Okay, what we're going to do next is to turn this around, open the, the lining fabric, and we're going to put this side, this edge of the zipper on top of the main fabric, and we're going to sandwich it again between the lining and the main fabric as exactly as we did before. Pin it along the edges so it's neatly attached and stitch with the zipper foot. So this is what we have now. Two flaps on each side and I am going to put my hand through the main fabric and open the zipper. You could of course open uh, the zipper before you do uh, the stitching, you might find that easier. And I'm turning around. And because we have a zipper longer than what we needed, we're now able to put some pins here to hold the lining fabric in place. And we have plenty of room to top stitch here as well, along there, just as we did previously here. So I will go to a sewing machine and top stitch. So this is what we have at the moment. There, so those stitches there will prevent the slider from escaping off this side. So I, I shall leave that there as it is. Uh, because I don't think it will create too much bulk, but I will trim this carefully so I don't damage my scissors. I shall open the zipper, keep it open, it's important to keep it open. And I am going to pull the lining through and then the main fabric gently so we don't rip anything and I am going to put this flat I am making sure that the fabric is well aligned because I want to find the middle of this piece of fabric I shall put a couple of pins so my fabric doesn't move and I will mark here this fold if you're using a different kind of stabilizer, you, you can actually iron it. Okay, the important thing is that we can see well this fold. I hope you can see it's a yellow marker. Now I am going to stitch there and here. So. Make sure that the zipper 
is the two sides are well aligned there. I shall go and do some stitching. Okay, um, I have stitched both sides and I shall put my hand through my gap and through the zipper which is open and I am going to make this fold match the seam here. So that's why I did the line so I can uh, see where exactly the fold is. So I'm filling it with my fingers so I am aligning this fold with the seam. I shall get the pin and I shall put this flat on the table. I shall get the ruler and I will measure an inch because that's the width we want at the bottom. So I am aligning the ruler. So because it is an inch, I'm finding the half, half the inch. The half inch mark is on top of the seam there. So when I press there, I have an inch exactly there. So that's the seam. I will go and stitch across here on the mark. It is important that you have the pin in place so the fabric stays in the right position for you to do the line. And I did the same on the other side, on the other corner. So both corners have these little uh, triangles there that we're going to trim, uh, leaving about a quarter of an inch, which is our seam allowance all through the project. I can now remove the pin, but we still have the lining. And remember the zipper is still open. So with the lining, we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to stitch on one of the sides. However, on the other side, we're going to leave a little opening. So if I get my Pen here we flatten this up we will stitch on one side that's no problem but on the other side where we're going to leave a gap we will stitch from the bottom up from here up about an inch and a quarter and from the top down about an inch so we'll have an opening of about an inch and a half. So I will come back to you in a moment. That's the gap I left here. So I press this fold and I'm putting my hand through the little gap because I want to, again, as we did here, I want to make this fold this fold uh, match the seam so that we can do the the flat bottom there. So with my fingers I can see the fold clearly and I will do the same as before and measure an inch. Remember half an inch, the half an inch mark has to be on top of the seam and I'm marking to stitch across here. I will do the same on the other side and I will come back to you. Okay, I have done the two corners. I shall remove the pins. I will trim off that and here. And through the little gap I shall put my fingers through gently. I shall put in my hand through the open zipper. I'm trying to catch the main fabric and I will bring it out gently, gently through this hole. So through the opening, I'm putting my fingers so that I can poke the corners out there. 
I shall tie the up and I'm closing the bag. And at this point, it's a good idea to iron the pouch. But before that, uh, we will find the gap of the lining. And to close it, you can either uh, hand stitch, a blind stitch, or just uh, so folding the edges, the row edges towards the inside, like so, and a stitch on top. So I'm going to the sewing machine and close this. So we have our pouch, that's the flat bottom there, one inch there. So if I take a ruler, and let me put this there, you can see that's just a little bit short of the seven and a half inches that we wanted, so that's okay. And if I put the ruler there, this ruler, you can see that is three and a half inches tall. So we have uh, reached the result that we wanted, the measurement, and I hope that my friend would be, will be pleased with it. So once again, I hope you have enjoyed this simple tutorial, but I am glad that somebody asked me about it because um, it, it's very easy to make a pouch like this using one solid, one design, plain design, where you don't have to cut two pieces of fabric to make the pouch. It's a nice beginner's project. Thank you very much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye.